Hi, this is Ron Carter. We're in New York today with a decent weather day. The first thing we'll do is talk about a book that just came out. It's called Behind the Changes. Uh, literally. Uh, this book came about as a conversation with uh, Billy Drummond, a friend of mine, who, during the course of recording, asked me, how do I do that? He one of the takes. He said, I, I said, how do I do what? He said, how do you hear this song, the first chorus, and by the second chorus, you have a whole different set of chords to go with it. I said, well, Billy, I, I just kind of do that. He said, we should sit down and figure out a process. So this morning, we'll have a couple of minutes to play you the results of that process. Uh, this book called Behind the Changes is made up of three kinds of songs. I got rhythm, uh, the blues, which everybody plays, and uh, a couple of standards or so. So what we'll do first is play you the blues changes uh, without any kind of uh, stopping between so you hear what this song sounded like as we just walked in the studio. Mr. And Mr. Picard, my associate for the day, will play just the changes for you by himself and I will come to him one more time. One, two, three, four. Here's the bass line that goes with those changes. Two, three, four. This basic format, I uh, have, to have a different set of changes. So the first thing we'll do is, again, the same form Mr. Picard will play you the changes in the form of a red notes, which it comes under transparency. That you turn this red page and it covers the original changes. So here are the red changes that you're going to play without my help. Two, three, four. The same changes with my help to make them sound like what I hear after the second chorus of Plant the Blues. Two, three, four. Now, this book is available through my site, and uh, for those of you who want to see what other choices they have, I'd recommend you take a look. Now, there's some nice sounds here, and you can find your own, but this is a process that I use, have used with my books, to figure out how to make the bass line have another kind of life. Behind the changes. Now's the time for uh, a couple of questions, so let me put the bass aside for a moment and uh, get a seat here. And let's address some of the questions that I hope I have some answers to this morning. Get a lot of greetings from Italy, from France.
from your son. <laughs> and we had someone who was playing along while you were demonstrating. Good for him. Her. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> it was Eric. So okay. your first guess was right. Okay, Eric. Here comes the first question. Which is getting compliments. Someone says, looks like a great concept for a book. People sending love. Let me show you. No questions. The book. Hmm. We have a first question. Okay. Um, how to play the changes with syncopated rhythm from Chan Chuan Hu? I'd recommend you play just quarter notes first so you find out how these new notes affect the chord. Uh, sometimes players use rhythm uh, so much so that the zone, that the groove is, that the kind of disappears because there's so much activity from the bass player. The kind of rhythm and the amount you use depends on what kind of groups you play with. Some bands like the bass player to be rhythmically active, some prefer you just to play quarter notes, so you have to kind of use your sense of a good taste and judgment. Uh, having said that, when you get this book, I'd recommend you just play the quarter notes so you can see just how they affect the changes of the original blues form. Thanks. David is asking, how do you approach working with another bassist? Uh, it depends on how sensitive they are to the sounds of the instrument. Uh, generally, when we do two bass things, we kind of have all this stuff to talk about what range we're going to try to avoid and, and uh, what, what ranges are compatible. Uh, I've had some great times playing with other bass players who seem to understand the need to have our ranges adjust as uh, the music demands and our ego is always in the third place between the two basses. Jacob from Ireland, um, do you expect the soloist to follow these new changes or do you like to think of the original changes in your changes as contrasting sounds? Well, they are both. I mean, we play these kind of other, other, other chords, these alternate changes, so the soloist can no longer practice the solo he worked on in his kitchen on this gig. That's the whole point of these kind of things. You know, and, and kind of the bass player's job is to command the band members' attention as they're playing. One way to do that is bring in a set of changes that's really that's beyond his comprehension, we hope, and he's willing to ask you what that was, and your job is to explain it to him and try it again for the next tune. Uh, but these changes are made to, to disrupt the flow that these guys have going, despite the help that they're trying to get from the back guys. Diego Tarantino is asking, what about minor blues? Well, minor means under 18. Well, <laughs> These are all over old tunes, so any change that will work. Steve Arnett is saying lots of two of fives, some outside keys. Speak to that, please. Yes, well, you know, two of fives are a way that the temporarily modulate from the key you started at. This, this change is having to have a whole series of them. Uh, your choice, you can make them dominant sevens, you can make them minor sevens. Uh, you can add flat fives to them, as long as you keep the root two fives working, all that stuff is good. It's like having a salad with different kinds of dressing. Edward is asking, how many substitutions of chords can be used in blues form? It depends on your patience and your chops. <laughs> An infinite amount. It depends on the, the time and the, and, and the place. Uh, hopefully you'll have uh, someone who can accompany you at these changes and, and figure out how they sound. My recommendation is to use your judgment and use your good taste. Dominic is asking, how often do you find yourself landing on a note that isn't the root uh, when the chord changes? Should this be avoided? Well, you know, I often get, uh, my, my joke with my students is about playing roots, you know, and I explain to them that sometimes uh, band leaders and, and, and uh, getting on my case will ask me to play some roots. And I explained to them the last roots I played was in 1975. If they want more, there's a farmer's market down the street that sells nothing but roots, carrots and beans and stuff like that. All that aside, the, the, the shape of the line depends on what note you land on. And if you plan your course according to a rule, it's necessary to tell this guy what he's supposed to listen for. Jay is asking, not sure I understand the red chords. Is that, um, are those chords you use while pianist plays basic chords? 
uh, the red chords are the alternate chords I came up with, in this case, for a 12 bar blues. And I have the transparency, so the transparency, transparency fits over the, the rhythmal changes so you can see exactly how they've evolved to what you see on the page. Then we have Mimatic uh, asking a harmonic question. How do you harmonically explain the changes in the sixth measure of the Reharn blues, B minor 7 to E flat 7, and the resolution to the next measure? Uh, let me look at my page here. That's on page 20 of this thing, I think, here. What well, measure 6? Yes. Good. The E flat is a flat 5 dominant of A minor 7. A, a chord is, a, is a, the dominant 7 going to the D chord. D is the dominant 7 going to the G chord. G is the dominant 7 going to the C chord. The B is a result of, if you go back 5 beats in bar 5, that B is just an extension of the F sharp minor chord. And the E flat chord can be called D sharp, which is going to the A. Uh, Chun Chun uh, Hu, how do you apply those changes into different time measure? For example, three four. Uh, if you call the last, the first two, the first three notes a dotted dotted half note, and the second two notes two eighth notes, it'll work. But that's not any fun to do that with this. I would just make up these alternate changes based on that simple three quarter tune. Tune in three fourth time. I, I'm not too interested in having this stuff be jammed into four chords into a three or four measure necessarily. It all works, but I think I find my other time spent better to try to make this these kind of changes fit in the three quarter three four tune to have have a really have a harmonic value. German is asking, does it work for turnarounds too? Yes. Um, Raymond is asking, can these changes be used in any concept of jazz groups? Yes, depends on how flexible your band members are, not just to your new harmonic direction, but uh, that they will understand and ask you what that was. Eric is asking, any tricks of the trade to help remember all of the different chord types so that, you're, uh, so that they're second nature and not mental? You have to do it all the time. It's like learning how to play fast. You can't practice at home playing fast. You've got to be on the gigs where guys play this tempo fast enough, often enough, so you can develop the skill to make that work. Same with alternate changes. Once you figure out what's going to work, you have to remember that sound. You have to remember that progression and be able to play that somewhere else to see where else it can fit. Uh, that's all a part of remembering and developing a concept. Paolo Santos is asking, what is the process you use to learn a new tune? Uh, uh, that the, earth, the first thing you have to do is, what is the form? If you can get the form in your head, 32 bars, 8, 8 repeated, the bridge, 8 bars, and the last 8, you've got to start on learning the tune because this form has certain mandatory changes. You must have a chord that goes to the first ending. You must have a chord that goes to the second ending. You have a chord that goes to the bridge. You have a chord that goes from the last note of chord to the bridge to the last 8. And the chord of the last day always goes to the top. If you have those real basic math concepts and understand this math of numbers and, and endings, uh, memorizing tune is not so complicated. And one more question, okay. which is not, it's more of a base question. Um, any advice on learning to play up the neck in second and thir or third position, taking advantage of open strings? You gotta get a teacher. There are books that kind of imply that process, but if you have a teacher who really understands how to use the open strings in order to make shifting easier and, and much more convenient, that's your best bet. I mean, you can learn by yourself, but I think an outside eye, an outside view of what you're doing with much a much more immediate way to be successful shifting from second to third position. Those are all questions. All right. Today. Well, the kind of, I'm almost questioned out, so to speak. Uh, just a reminder, this book called Behind the Changes, which has a cover that looks like this, just came out two weeks ago, and it's gotten a lot of interest, and I'd, I'd recommend bass players to sit down with this book and just watch how it works before you dive into it. My second suggestion to you is have one of your guitar player or keyboard player friends just to play the chords for you so you can, so you can hear how, how uncomplicated they are despite how complicated they look. And uh, my third thing is that Got to take a chance and play them, and if the guys don't like it, maybe you should quit the band. <laughs> um, maybe you should find groups that like alternate chords. Uh, I, I use these things to kind of make the bass the focus of the harmony in the band. 
And uh, when it works great, it's really fantastic. And there are times when my choice may not have been the best choice for the moment, and I know what that means. So for this band or this group or this song, they will not have this, this chord beating them in the head. But when I have a chance to try them out and to see if they do, in fact, have the effect of making the horn player just think more about their play from information coming from this part of the band, I'm all for it. Actually, we have one interesting question from oh, someone okay. who has the book. Okay. He says, uh, can you elaborate on the transcribing myth? I have done a lot of transcribing in school. I learned a lot from transcribing your playing on the McCoy Tyner New York reunion album, but I do not believe I learned as much from the various solos I had to transcribe. Thanks. His name is James Joyner. James, I'm not sure that transcription is a good way to learn how to play bass lines. I spent the past three hours with students this morning starting at 8 a.m. New York time, and we spent I spent half hour of each lesson just discussing my view about transcriptions. To make this not so complicated in a short time, one of the reasons I think transcriptions are misleading is that those choruses that have been transcribed have been part of a perfect storm. That means that the piano player before then played the right voicing, that the drummer played the right rhythm, that the horn player played the right solo to make this bass line worthwhile of transcribing. My concern is what happens for the four courses before this transcribed course? What development took place in the band? How did his hands feel for four courses to make this line worthy of being transcribed? What happened after this, bar, after this course? What happened for the next four or five tunes? What happened for the past, next four or five nights? Did this specific, did this, did this specific uh, course that's been put out there for transcription value was it developed somewhere else for the tune? Was it developed somewhere else for the night? Was it developed somewhere else for the year? And I'm not sure transcriptions give you that width and breadth of options. And my recommendation to you is that I read to my students is that you get a book that I happen to have available called Building a Jazz Baseline. And in this book, it shows you the process that I use to make lines have their own life. The lines have a melody. The lines that when you walk into the room after one course, you should know what tune this guy's playing from the bass line he plays. Uh, transcriptions for me are, are not the best way to give that option. Having said that, and you may very well learn this bass line singular perfectly, what would you play for the next chorus? James, let me know how you feel about that. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.